So Lost Ocean was the natural next book after Secret Garden and Enchanted Forest. I wanted to take people on this magical underwater journey. So much scope for really, really beautiful coral gardens and these weird tangles of seaweed and lots of different dark caves and, and shipwrecks. I had like a dream list of things that I wanted to include in the book and my plan was just to cram as much of that in as possible. I am from rather fishy beginnings. I grew up on a fish farm in rural Scotland and my mum and dad are both marine biologists. So I've always had this affinity for the sea um, and it just felt like a real natural fit to, to start drawing those sort of underwater ocean themed pictures. My dad gave me all his scientific encyclopedias. So I would sort of look through those and look at drawings of like seahorses and sea urchins and really cool squid and different octopus. So I would sort of take those images, but then I would sort of mix it with some things that I had just in my imagination to make these weird hybrid creatures. And scattered throughout the book, there's the contents of a treasure chest. And on each page, there's like one or two, maybe three pieces of hidden treasure. I don't like to plan my drawings too much. Everything's really organic usually, and I just start at one point, usually in the middle of the page, and then the drawing just grows. I draw only on layout paper, so it's super smooth, bleached white. I draw everything in pencil first so I can work out the composition. Then when I'm happy with it, I put a new sheet of paper over the top, and I redraw it in ink, and then scan it into the computer. And I use the computer just to sort of digitally finish it, so it might be rotating a butterfly or flipping something that's symmetrical. More often, it's um, erasing tea spillages or chocolate fingerprints. So I think of the books as a collaboration, and it's my job to create the artwork, to draw the black and white illustrations, and then whoever has the book, it's their job to bring the colour. People love to show their work. And then the internet just makes the colouring community so vocal. So we set up a colouring gallery on my website um, and you can upload pictures of your finished creations and share what kind of pens and pencils that you used. And it's just a really cool way that I can have the same set of 100 drawings in a book, but they're all coloured completely differently. You never see the same picture coloured the same way twice. You know, everyone puts their own mark of individuality on it. And I love that. I think it's a great opportunity to to step away from a screen and stop being digital, to do some analogue and, and to flex your creative muscles. The great thing about my books is it's totally up to you. You know, everything's presented to you in black and white. Who says the ocean has to be blue? You know, get your neons out. Maybe it's a red and orange and yellow ocean. Whatever floats your boat, so to speak. <laughs>